Welcome to the A Minute to Midnight show. This is your host Tony and today on the show I have Laura Maxwell returning as a guest. It's a powerful show and it's one that I'm sure uh, many will get a lot out of even if you haven't heard of this topic before. It's well worth listening to and well worth sharing. I want to welcome back to the A Minute to Midnight show, Laura Maxwell. We've had Laura on the show a couple of times before, but it's quite some time ago. Laura's in Scotland, and it's great to be talking to you again today, Laura. Hi, Tony. Thank you so much to be talking to you in New Zealand and to your listeners too. Thank you. Yes, and of course our listeners are all over the place in New Zealand, Australia, the US, some in the UK, Canada. It's all good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Why are we doing this show? Why are you doing this show? What do you want to warn people of? And what exactly is the topic? Yeah, well, well, thanks for asking. You know, really, I, I just want to share um, a topic that, as you say, is controversial. Sex with ghosts and aliens. Um, and, and, you know, really, I, I want to say at the very outset of the show that my own mother was a medium and she was um, involved in these alleged ghosts and alleged aliens and she even was raped by them. Um, so, you know, it's a topic that I do have um, knowledge of and obviously I, I was a spiritualist too for many years. So it, it's an area that um, I do have insight into and I really just want to, to, to warn listeners, whether they are mediums themselves um, who have been affected by this, or maybe they're not mediums. Um, whatever a person's spiritual uh, belief system, I really just want to warn you from personal experience, um, and um, also just share that you know we're not pointing the finger at people, we're not attacking people uh, by giving our opinion here. We're genuinely concerned for people. Um, I, for example, have saw too many people. Um, becoming very ill with such phenomena, even uh, incarcerated in, in psychiatric hospitals. My own mother, she eventually committed suicide um, because of this type of phenomena. So really when I'm sharing on it, sharing on it, it it's not to be um, pointing the finger at folks, it's genuinely just wanting folks to, to um, realise there's some deep concerns in this. So what is this phenomena and does it have a name? Yeah, um, it, it, the name of it is, is spectrophilia, um, w which basically just means um, people having uh, sexual desires, fantasies, or actual practicing sexual, um, you know, practices with entities. Um, and, and, you know, again, saying that, that I have a little experience um, of, of these things from my background in, in spiritualism, I would like to say at the outset, um, you know, think about the dangers and the reality of, of this, people, because, you know, to me, it, it's like almost um, doing a strip tease act while playing with, with a Ouija board. You know, you can't always expect that these so-called ghosts are, are going to be friendly ones. You could be raped. And I really want to unpack that whole area uh, as we go into the show and show you what I have found out about these so-called entities anyway. Um, but, but yeah, and I also want to, to mention on the show that last month a medium spoke on national TV advocating sex with ghosts. So it's very, very topical right now. And it started a whole lot of um, articles about that in the UK press and many of the tabloids here. And I've saw other such articles popping up. So it's um it's very topical right now, and I would like to give just a little definition of that. So so we have spectrophilia, um, which as I say, you know, is is relating to having sex with any kind of entities, whether it is ghosts or so-called aliens and so on. Okay, so can you define it a little bit? Like, uh, you know, I'm sure people have heard of the term incubus and succubus. And yeah, you know, what are they? And is this related to the sirens and nymphs of folklore? Can spirits literally touch people physically? And how would you respond to those who say that it's merely imaginary? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as as we know that that, that it's dis- described as defined as spirits of, of succubus and incubus. So according to medieval uh, folklore, um, the succubus is a demon that takes on the form of a woman in order to have sex um, with humans. Um, and the old Latin word for that means to lie under. Uh, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, and we know this. And right back through history, we will have heard of many cultures and societies who, who did claim they experienced these things um, so again, nothing new. Some say that the Dead Sea Scrolls refer to it. It talks about a seductress um, who had horns and wings and that, that she tempted men into into sin. Um, there is a verse in, in Proverbs 2, 18 in, in the Old Testament of the Bible that describes dangers of the seductress or a strange woman. Now, some people claim that this might be referring to this phenomenon, but I don't think it is really. It looks much more just like a human temptress to me. However, we are um, very much aware that the Bible does show, you know, that, that demons are very real and can affect people. So uh, why not sexually? Um you know, I would just like to put in there a little bit from my own experience as well. When I was being attacked by um, spirits back when I was a spiritualist, um, when I'd just come to, to, to God, actually, because of all of it, I'd just come to God um, and I was really terrorized by it all. And I was asking him for help. And I literally did, you know, I was led to a scripture in the Bible that's in Psalm 91 verse 5. And it says, you shall not be afraid of the terrors by night. Um, That's really really interesting. Sorry to interrupt. It's really interesting that you just Mm -hmm. mentioned that because I was going to actually mention that exact verse. So you really pricked my ears up. Um, Absolutely, yes. I'm sure that verse means different things to different people. No, I suspect that that's... uh I suspect that that is exactly what it's talking about because there's the, the Lilith, the spirit which is mentioned um, in the Bible in the actual Hebrew word for Lilith as a description of this, really. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, sorry, carry on. Yes, yeah, so, you know, for me, I was definitely having terrors by night. Um, doctors would call this sleep paralysis, of course. Um, but And I was also led to a verse, again, something that would happen to me while I was being attacked by spirits was often um, my they would grab my foot and hold me down in the bed while they were attacking me. So again, um, I was led to a verse um, whilst this was happening to me. Um, Proverbs 3, verse 24 to 26. And um, it, it goes on to say, um, it talks about your... your not being afraid of sleep uh, and that your foot will not become a snare and literally I could have leapt off the bed when I read that because it was so accurate and that was God giving me promises that yes I would be set free from this phenomenon and indeed I was set free which I will mention later on in the show for people who who, who want to be set free themselves now that's just a little um, aside there but yeah you were asking about sirens and nymphs and of course, this phenomena still actually happens today, even though um, it, you know it goes back to Greek mythology and so on. And back then, they were said to be these um, spirits or mermaids, if you like, that lured sailors by their enchanting music um, and their singing to become shipwrecked. Um, now, now, some people say that that that, that still happens. Um, Leonardo da Vinci even wrote of it. Of, of sirens and they were described to be some of them were had um they were like half birds or half fish you know mermaids and so on and again similarly from from folklore from mythology we have the the concept of of, of nymphs and they were said to be deities or, or water goddesses again they would um attract travelers they would lure them by sexuality um uh, and they could be very dangerous. They could even cause madness or, or you know, really just afflict the, the human who they enticed. Now, again, nothing new under the sun. Um, as far as I see it, these spirits have always masqueraded as, as one thing or another d- uh, down the ages to snare people 
and uh, eventually, not always, but, but sometimes terrorise them and, and even, yes, even lead to suicide or their death. Um, and I think it's interesting that down through the ages, as it were, I believe demons are opportunistic. Um, they, they will follow the fashions of, of the times we're living in. If people are interested in mermaids, then they will turn up as a mermaid. If people are interested in fairies, they will turn up as that. Um, it's almost as if they will follow the current fashion of the day. And of course, nowadays, it, it seems to be um, much more um, common, if you like, for spirits to impersonate aliens or, or, or half snakes or just different kinds of identities. Um, but I feel that basically at the end of the day, it's all one and the same thing, which I will give evidence for um, as the show progresses. And, and yeah, you, 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 you did ask me, um, you know, can demons be felt physically? And uh, I thought that's, that's a good question, Tony. Because I guess a lot of folks hearing this will think that's absolute nonsense. These people are um, either mentally ill or they're on drugs or they're just imagining things. Um, but, you know, back in the day when I was a spiritualist and my mum was a medium, we certainly knew we weren't imagining things. That it was very tangible indeed. And now, these years later as a Christian, I'll still say that um, these entities are very tangible indeed and can be physically felt. Um, so people that are listening who are Bible believers, they might question that. So can I please share from the Bible just to um, show you some evidence? Well, you have in Genesis 32, 22 to 32, Remember the story where Jacob was left with a limp after wrestling with an angel. So that's pretty physical. Acts 12.6, Peter got gently struck by an angel. Um, so really my point is if an angel of God can make itself be felt in a physical way and touch a person tangibly or even move objects, then so can a fallen angel, a.k.a. demon. Um, we have Mark 9, 21 to 22, where where the man was, was pleading um, for help because a demon was taking his child and oftentimes casting it into the fire. Um, so, yeah, demons can act. Today, people might think that's a poltergeist, but demons can physically move a person or move objects. Of course, they can. And um, giving that some uh, backup from evidence um, that, that I've come to know over the years. People in the deliverance ministry, you know, have literally watched people being thrown around on the room while they're being set free from demons or, for example, bite marks or scratch marks appearing on the person's body, um, so-called poltergeist phenomena. So, you know, if they can exert a physical force and be felt by people, um, that, that just shows you as well that it is very true and of course, after deliverance ministry, once the person has been set free by the power of Jesus, the person will report that such demonic attacks have stopped. So, yeah, they, they can be felt. Um, a friend of mine, Dana, she was a paranormal investigator and, and she also um, says her husband, for example, was um, attacked by by a spirit. And, and then, of course, you have... Um, we won't obviously go into the whole Genesis 6 debate. It's not a topic that I'm fond of. But, you know, there are those who say, well, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, the Nephilim um, had sex with women and so on. Again, it's not a topic I really look at at all, but that's just an example. But, but yeah, they definitely can be felt. And it is not just, OK, sometimes people might have a nightmare or they've imagined it. But if you're a person who's dabbling in the occult or witchcraft or any kind of a spirit divination, then I'm sure you'll have heard stories of, of this type of thing yourself and um, realise that it's a very true phenomena. Yeah, absolutely. And you yeah, talking about the Genesis 6 very quickly. Um, it's in, For example, in 6.4 it says there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came into came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men of old, which 
were men of renown. So basically that's fallen angels, I believe, that were able to mate with humans at the time, uh, and that's how we got the Nephilim and all that. But yeah, like you say, we won't go into that, but um, just thought I'd bring that up. Yeah, because pe- pe- personally I don't believe they were actual demonic giants, but as I say, I just brought it up because I think it's worth mentioning that it's certainly a debate that has has uh, lasted for years and adds to the whole question of, you know, can demons have sex with people? Okay, yep, well, I'm, I'm looking also, I have a book here, just quickly, I want to re- read a little bit, um, a book by Tom Horn called Exo Vaticana, and he has a section called Return of the Hybrid Humans, and there's a little bit where it talks of a guy who lived 1622 to 1701, his name was Sin- uh, Sinistrary which I wonder if the word sinister comes from that, but he basically was regarded as an expert on sexual sins and he wrote extensively of individuals accused of amorous relations with demons. And I'm not going to read a whole heap of it, but he mm-hmm. basically did a, um, a oh, there's one section about a monastery and a nun who was supposedly uh, basically having sex with demons. And I'll just read a, a little piece towards the end of it. And it, um, it it says, the abbess threatened to have the door broken in and even ordered a convert to force it with a crowbar. And the nun then opened her door, a search was made, and no one was found because they'd been hearing what sounded like sex in the room. Um, being asked with whom she had been talking and why and wherefore of the bed cracklings of the size, etc., she denied everything. But matters going on just the same as before, the r- arrival nun became more attentive and more inquisitive than ever, contrived to bore a hole through the partition so as to be able to see what was going on inside the cell. And what should she see but an elegant youth lying with a nun in the sight of whom she took care to let others enjoy by the same means. The charge was soon brought before the bishops. The guilty nun endeavoured to deny all, but threatened with torture, she confessed having had intimacy with an incubus. And so that was documented, you know, in the 1600s or early 1700s, mm-hmm. so... Mm-hmm. It's certainly not something, you know, that's just a recent uh, no, phenomenon. But, you know, but recently there has been media coverage coverage mm-hmm. of this topic that concerns you and you actually saw a medium on national TV in the UK promoting sex with alleged ghosts. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, and just before I do, you know, some people might say, well, it's easy to accuse um, a demon of, of having sex with you. You know, if you, if you were married, for example, you don't want your husband to think you were <laughs> unfaithful, yeah. so you blamed it on a ghost. That's really easy. Well, yeah, maybe sometimes that does happen. But when it's things like that, where there actually have been witnesses of, of a spectre appearing and disappearing, then it's obviously not just um, lies. Yeah, basically, it was just last month on national TV in the UK. Um, so, you know, a huge audience would have saw it was morning TV, which is even more alarming. And um, this was called the This Morning Show. Um, and, and she went on there and spoke. Um, the Daily Mail tabloid covered it, and as did other um you know, daily tabloids here like the Independent, the Glamour magazine, the Daily Star and so on. The, it really just swept through the tabloids here in their printed versions and on their online versions. Um, so, you know, at first, some people might think, well, you'd expect a public outcry because of this. But but no, you know, it just really went around the media. Um You'd think maybe parents would have spoken out, concerned about their teenagers who may be intrigued by this or even begin experimenting with this. But, you know, I think it's a sign of the times that practices once taboo are are now becoming far more normalised and accepted and even promoted. And I think that that some people are just afraid to speak up for fear of being labelled as unpolitically correct or, you know, let people do what they want type of attitude. Um, so, but it, but it is something that 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 is really quite concerning. So, yeah, the lady, um, 
she describes herself as a spiritual counsellor, uh, but her description really, as I would say, d- defines someone who is a medium and who is in contact with spirits that, that she believes are ghosts. Um, so it was a morning programme, 10.30 a.m. in the morning, so you're probably talking about 20 million viewers in the UK uh, may have saw this. And she explained that she has given up sex with men because she prefers to have sex with ghosts. Um, and she's had about 20 alleged ghostly lovers, you know, over the years. She said the sex is amazing, and, and this was why um, she's decided to to um, pursue this. Um, you know, I would say right from the outset, I find that in itself a red flag, and I would ask anyone that's doing this to question you know, why would it be if these were truly ghosts, which I don't believe they are, I'll explain later, but why would um, a ghost, just because he's dead, suddenly, um, you know, be amazing at, at uh, sexual activity? Where is the logic in that? And as I say, the, these these spirits masquerade as if they're dead women or dead men. Why would it be that they suddenly produce, you know, amazing sex for the humans that that sleep with them. And this is a very common theme that people will uh, share about this phenomenon, that the sex was absolutely amazing. That, to me, is a red flag, uh, you know, and it implies that this is more of a supernatural being than just a, a dead person. And also, if it's possible to have sex with dead people, why would that be attractive because let's face it, um, a so-called ghost could be a perverted old man that, that's coming to you, especially if you can't see who he is. And a, a lot of these people will say they can't even see the guy's face. So for all you know, it could be a perverted old man, you know, uh, which again, I will share how I believe it's not. But it, the logic in it is quite, is, is really quite scary. Um, and basically when people do this, I believe they have opened door they opened a door, it's like a welcome invitation to the spirit world and often people who do do this find it very difficult to get free from but anyway, this lady went on to say that she fell in love with this, um, with one of these um, so-called ghosts and um, you know, that th- this was something that sh- she's really promoting now, now the, the hosts were quite amazed by it all and even a little uh, perplexed and cracking jokes about it, you know, and but, and they've asked experts about this phenomena. And yeah, you've had professors and so on who, uh, and psychologists who have said that, you know, this phenomena, it's not ghosts, it's not aliens or spirits, it's just what's known as sleep paralysis. It's very common, about 40% of the population have experienced it. Um, you can't move, you become almost paralyzed. You, you you think that you're sensing a presence in the room. You think that you see dark shadows or monstrous figures and you think that you're even being held by them or dragged out the bed or raped by them. But it's just a, a, a hallucination that occurs during certain stages of, of sleep um, or you know coming out of sleep or falling to sleep. But I would argue, well, not necessarily because a lot of people experience this when they're fully awake and not just sleeping, um, as I say. So we can't just say it's it's a nightmare. Now, I went online to, to see the comments that people were leaving on the TV's actual website under the, the ladies' interview. And people were, um, you know, giving their concerns. Now, one woman who, who is a, a psychic, spiritualist medium herself, she was even alarmed at this and, and she said... Um, you know, th- this is not, um, a ghost wouldn't do this. This is um, incubus and succubus. You, you need to be set free from this. Whereas other psychics and mediums were saying it is okay. So there is a, um, you know, a, a, a division of opinion with this. Um, and I also think that, you know, and sometimes the psychics will say it's just negative energies. It's not really a, a demon, no such thing as a demon. It's a negative energy. But I would argue negative energies or residual energies or so on, energy itself can act like a sentient, intelligent being with with a with a purpose of intent. So it's not just a mere energy. 
like an electrical impulse. If it's a sentient being that, that acts with intent, it is a being. Um, and we will go on to, to, to give um, our opinion on, on what this what this being is. And one woman on the, the, the website when I was leaving comment, when I saw the comments, she um, wrote to me and said she was a new age lady. She was a pagan. She said, why is this bad? Why are you so concerned? This lady seems happy doing this. So what does it matter who she has sex with? And and I said to her, you know, if a woman had sex with, with a man who was wearing a mask and he seemed really nice and then she later found out he was actually evil, would she not be disgusted that he had lied to her and deceived her about his identity? Um, you know, and I've heard from people worldwide, not just as a Christian in the last 20 years, but way back when I was still a spiritualist, of people who were abused by spirits who pretended to be someone other than who they were. They will masquerade, they can be deceiving, they will um, deceive people of their true identity. So, in actual fact, it, it is very a dangerous, dangerous practice. I saw also in um, a Welsh online newspaper, again, just in December 2017, another woman who reported a very same experiences. So again, it's, it's as if at the moment there is a, there is a, a revival of this experience hitting the media. Um, she was a, a spiritualist too, and again, she claimed she had amazing sex with this 19th century man, you know. And I feel that really, with when people are advocating this, it may for people who have never heard of it before, it's bringing it to their attention. So for some people, they might think, "Hey, this is an option for me. I'm single. I don't want a relationship. Why don't I have sex with so-called ghosts or so-called aliens?" Um, you know, and there is apparently, there is lots of websites out there by mediums, by channelers and so on that even actually show you how to attract a so-called spirit husband, how to uh, attract a sexual relationship with an entity that is not of this world. So again, it, it's really um, something that is very popular just now. And I feel that it's good to raise these these dangers and red flags with people. And again, you know, I would I would ask people to question this. Um, you know, being raped by such entities. If you're raped by a human being, you can at least report it. Try and get a court order to get the guy banned <laughs> from your vicinity. But you know, if you've been raped by supernatural beings at any time of the day and night, you can't get the police to your home. Um, so. And also question this, you know, the logic of it. Why on earth would so-called ghosts want to come and have sex with humans? Don't you think there's plenty of ghosts they could have sex with? You know, why on earth would they want to? <laughs> I just think that the logic in that itself is a bit of a red flag. Um, but again, you know, experts on, on the Welsh um, programme were saying, for example, um, yeah, they were saying it was just sleep paralysis and... But, but my point is, all, all down the ages, whether it's been occultists, whether it's been shamans, anyone who's channeled entities will report this. And, and they will even say that they deliberately open portals to bring in, you know, such spirits. There was one parapsychologist on, on under this show on the video that commented, and he is a ghost hunter, by the way. He, he wrote a book called Ghost Sex, The Violation. And he actually said, no one knows what motivates ghosts to have sex with the living. Are we lab rats to them? Is there some kind of battle for our souls? Are these ghosts demons trying to break us? Who knows? Now, this guy's a ghost hunter, a parapsychologist. He doesn't believe in Jesus. And even he is questioning this. Um, people have said, you know... Nowadays, people just want to brag about their sex lives. It's all over the media, the world over, celebrities or non-celebrities. And I think, yeah, this is part of it. That There's a rise of promiscuity today, you know, and a rise of occult programs. So I'm almost thinking, will we soon have TV shows that kind of marry the both, where you have, for example, Most Haunted meets Sex in the City? You know, because it just seems that sexuality itself 
itself today has been promoted so much as well as the old cult. And I think people are not as shocked because it's been happening for years. It's like a drip, drip, drip effect. It's become normalised. It's like the boiling frog syndrome. People are just not so shocked anymore. Back in the 1980s, there was that movie Ghost, where the character played by Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore had a bit of a sexual encounter. And that was shocking way back then when I still was a spiritualist. Um, But nowadays you've got programs, you've got books, you've got movies about people having sex with vampires or angels and so on. So I think it really is normalising it for society. Um, And, you know, celebrities too are, are talking about these things. So I want to just quickly, you know, address the fact that you say that uh, some of the supposed experts are saying it's sleep paralysis and that there's no physical, you know, no actual demonic thing or whatever. Well, I'd like to say it wasn't sexual, but when I was 17 years old, I was strangled by one of these so-called, you know, Mm. that they would say didn't happen, sleep paralysis, but I was well and truly woken up and I was upright and I was struggling to breathe and the thing would have killed me. Now they could say, mm-hmm. oh, well, that was just in your mind. But the fact was two other people in another room had a similar encounter the same night, except that they gra- were grabbed by the arm. They weren't strangled by the throat. So how did we all have sleep paralysis in the same house on the same night and also other encounters over a few days period? It's like, nah, sorry. There was definitely mm-hmm. a demonic thing. And I know when I was this close to death and it was only calling on I wasn't a Christian at the point, but, you know, I knew enough to basically start praying the the Lord's Prayer, and that was what got me saved from being killed, I believe. So that's just an aside, but, you know, that's why I go, nah, these people have no clue, because it hasn't happened to them. They can come up with these things, Uh you know. But Uh, Yeah, I I believe that. You know, as I said, Tony, (coughs) excuse me, I experienced that. My mother experienced that, and... um, she, when she experienced it, she literally thought they would kill her. I remember her sobbing. I remember her screaming from the other room when she was being attacked by these entities and even raped by them. Um, and on one particular night when she had been raped and was being attacked, she thought they would kill her. She literally uh, prayed, asking for a more, a more evolved spirit guide, a more spiritual being to come and rescue her. And this angel appeared, shining brightly. She assumed that it was Lucifer, and and she believed then that that Lucifer was, you know, a good angel. Um, But when he got close to her, she realized he wasn't, and she realized all the spirits had been lying to her. They were actually evil spirits pretending to be dead relatives, pretending to be spirit guides and so on. That night, she shouted on Jesus Christ, and that demon and all the other demons disappeared. Um, she didn't come to Jesus that night. It was it was shortly. Uh, it was later. But yeah, and when she did come to Jesus, um, she the phenomena continued simply because the Christians that we got to know had no experience of the deliverance ministry. They didn't believe Christians could have demons, and um, she basically needed exorcism. She didn't get it, and as the attacks continued, she killed herself. You know, and this is so, so common. I hear from people all around the world all the time in the same position. Yes, they've come to Jesus. They've stopped dabbling with divination and so on. But the local church has no experience of casting out the demons and the people are at their wits end. But as soon as they get referred to a deliverance minister or they learn how to cast the demons out themselves in Jesus' name, this phenomena stops. So again, you know, how can that be one's imagination? And it is so, as you say, the sleep paralysis that attacks by by these spirits brings on a whole host of symptoms and anxiety, depression, panic attacks, insomnia, and many end up in psychiatric hospitals um, misdiagnosed as as, as psychotic. So, yeah, I do believe you. Um, And, you know, we're talking about um, people in the media there, and as I mentioned, celebrities... You know, I don't know if you're aware, Tony, that um, we have celebrities also talking about this phenomena. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that? 
again, you know, nothing new under the sun. It's a fad at the moment, it seems, but, it, you know, Hollywood have been raising it every now and then in recent years. We have, um, for example, you know, you have got Lady Gaga. She wrote a song about sex with, with, a, with an entity uh, some years ago. You have Katy Perry, there's Keisha. You know, there's different celebrities who have mentioned this uh, and who have even been quite open and some will say that, yeah, they had sex with an entity. And again, they will emphasise it was the best amazing sex they ever had. Now, now when you have popular, famous singers saying that, um, you know, people people do follow these stars and they do take to heart what they say. And, and I, I should suggest that... Um, especially teenagers um, might be attracted to, to try this. And as I say, we know they have been because there, there are lots of sites online that even give you advice on how to attract uh, these spirits to come and have, have sex have sex with you. Bobby Brown, the, the, the ex-husband um, of, the, of the late Whitney Houston, he said he was uh, assaulted by a sexual uh, spirit. You know, it, it's just something that Natasha La Blazik, um, who actually, strangely enough, had a role in, in Paranormal Activity 2, she said she was sexually assaulted against her will by a spirit, but then she enjoyed it and um, found that, you know, she actually enjoyed it. Dan Aykroyd, one of the original Ghostbusters from the movie, something similar happened to him. So... You know, there's also a famous actress who went to visit Graceland and she believed the ghost of Elvis Presley seduced her. You have people who, who, who have said, I know two people in the last week who told me they got deliverance ministry because um, they were seduced by a so-called spirit of Michael Jackson. Um, you have famous basketball players who visited a hotel in Oklahoma City who stopped going to the hotel when they were on tour because they were tired of being sexually uh, assaulted by a resident so-called um, female ghost in that hotel who kept kept them awake at night from uh, you know sexually coming to them. And as I say, Keisha wrote about it in her song Supernatural. So overall, you know, a lot of the portrayals of this portray as a very positive thing rather than a negative thing and, and as something that could be an option for someone who, who wants to experience this amazing sex. So do you feel that the exposure of such practices as this is actually on the rise? And if it is, why do you think it is? Yeah, I think it is on the rise. And as I say, obviously all down throughout history, it has happened. And you could argue that, well, people wouldn't report it before. They would probably be too embarrassed to report it. Um, and nowadays people are just more open with the experiences. Therefore, it's, there's more coverage of it. But no, I would argue that it's more than that. It's genuinely um, a practice that is increasing. Um, I think that because today, you know, the, the, the lines are blurring so much. We have much more of syncretism taking place where people are more drawn to try out um, various avenues of the occult than they maybe wouldn't have done before. You know, folks who maybe never who would have tried animism or, or, or shamanism or witchcraft and so on are, are trying it and they're merging it with spiritualism. They're merging it with all different things. So I believe for people this is opening more demonic gateways um, and really as I said it's a sign of the times sexuality today is, is always uh, in the in the media's eye it seems we have even of course that this phenomena of people will, will be able to have sex with robots so 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 the if you like the sexual morality of people I think is changing quite a lot there, there's I've seen programs on, on ordinary TV here. The, um, about people who are hosting sex parties and this is seemingly you know quite acceptable nowadays now basically these are just orgies now again I'm not saying this never happened in the past of course it did but it's given much more exposure now and therefore I think attracting more people to these things that otherwise wouldn't have um, been attracted to it and I think you know this this does 
raise the question of to me it's almost like a silent epidemic that, that is happening um, to people that would never have, have probably got into it before and of course um, as we're aware and as your um, your colleague Brooke was chatting to me about it yesterday and she said something that I've considered too that you know how long will it be before this does even creep into the church because as we know in ancient times, as we know from scriptures, um, people have have always the, the believers have always ended up taking on the practices of their neighbours, whether it be witchcraft, sexual practices, and so on. So, how long will it be before this does um, come into the church? Now, that might sound ridiculous, but there's been things in the past we thought would never reach the church, and it has. Um, and I think many Christians are afraid to speak up about these things because they don't want to be labelled and politically correct. They don't want to say that's wrong, for example. But, you know, how long will it be before? Where do we draw the line then? You know, soon there will be talk, I'm sure, of, of governments wanting to, to legalise, dare I say, paedophilia, bestiality and so on, because they'll be saying, well, Pedophiles have got rights. People who want to have sex with animals have got rights, um, not just homosexuals or, or, you know, transgenderism and all that. I think it's really opening up um, just the whole area of politically correctness going a bit bizarre. And, you know, folks may argue, well, what what is the point of all of this? Why is this happening? As you said, Tony, why is this increasing now? Well, I think it's because it is the last days. Satan's days are short. Uh, these evil demons of his are really ramping up the, the, the darkness and trying to get as many people as possible away from salvation in Jesus Christ and just demonized, basically, to keep them away from Jesus and within the church too, as part of the great falling away. We hear so much nowadays about, you know, the truth uh, and deception and so on, the, the truth everywhere is being questioned. There's people, there's widespread deception everywhere. And yes, I believe because the ultimate aim is really to keep people away from salvation in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And I'm just thinking too that the um, if you tie in uh, the alien abductions, which so many people report, and that's you know, increasing hugely the number of reported alien abductions and so on and so many of those are sexual in nature as well where they do sexual experiments on them and it's like folks put two and two together these are the same entities sometimes masquerading as incubus or succubus or aliens but they have the same agenda so um can Absolutely. you can you share some comments from other ex-occultists and deliverance ministers that you know yeah, well, even touching on what you said, yeah, you know, th there's people that have said whether it's so-called ghosts or so-called aliens, that, that this is um, definitely on the rise. Now, people have, have gave me examples. Um, as I say, I've known about this down through the years, of course, but even in the last day or so on Facebook, people have shared where... Yeah, very much they've been affected by these things. They've been violated when they're awake, not just when they're asleep. And yes, there have been witnesses there. Um, often people will say it seems to be much more common within the practice of astral projection. And again, I would urge people not to do astral projection because I do believe that it is actually demonic. And these so-called beings you're meeting are demons and not the entities they claim to be. And, and really, that can be proven by testing these spirits in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to show you their true identity. Uh, often people do that, as the Bible recommends, test the spirits. And when people do that, they will say that, yes, the, the, the so-called um, ascended master or whatever morphed into its true evil demonic form. You know, I've had mediums around the world seeing me say that on TV and they've contacted me to say they did that. And yes, the so-called being morphed into a demon. So, you know, it, it, it's very, it's very real phenomena. And yeah, the claw mark 
the people told me comments about claw marks, bite marks appearing um, on, on people's body. People um, reporting so-called shadow people, so-called shadow person, you know, in their room that gave them much trauma when they were growing up, for example. And some people, yeah, deliverance ministers have, have shared with me that this particular phenomena is a bit of a double whammy because the person will need deliverance, yes, from, from the demons that are having sex with them, but also from an addiction because a lot of the people will get addicted to this and they do want to get set free, but they don't want to get set free. So it's not um, a clear cut issue. Some people will say, um, have told me that spirits sometimes appeared looking like their ex-boyfriends. Um, and once they were told by a Christian to rebuke it in Jesus' name, you know, it would attack them or it would show its true form. It wasn't really their ex-boyfriend. Um, one woman said, I sobbed my eyes out when Jesus told me um, what had been going on, you know, with her. And she had been violated by these by these spirits and she came to realise that they were actually demons. Um, so, and people, you know, can be affected by these things. It's not just because people ask for it. Some people are, have been affected by these things because they were raised by parents who were into the occult or perhaps even occult or satanic ritual abuse. And so they've always had these demons in the house um, that, that sometimes raped them. So, you know, it's not always through choice this happens to people. And certainly, as I say, they can be set free by by Jesus. You know, and some Christians will say, well, those who do do it deliberately, who, who, who ask for this sexual encounter with a spirit, they're just really crazy. It's really foolish. Well, I would argue, how, what do you expect people to do? It's the Christians and the pastor's responsibility to share about these things. If society doesn't know that these things are demons, you can't blame them for getting caught up in all of this. It's our divine responsibility to speak out. If we don't speak out, the church's silence on these matters only allows it to get worse. So, you know, we do need to we do need to speak out basically and to warn people what's going on. There's no point in believers just sitting in their ivory towers and, and not even knowing what's going on in society. These people will eventually come for help and come to your church. And I really hope that, that they will get the deliverance they need. Um, you know, because it's it's really obviously when, when you consider that there's all these websites now that tell telling you, advising you how you can go about attracting sex with entities, you know, my goodness, it just shows you where society is really at. Absolutely, yes. And um, as our time is getting on uh, towards the end of things, can you address the issue of purity a little bit? Yeah, I would like to. I would like to do that. And you know, as I say, if there are folks listening, before I go into that, if there are folks listening who are not a Christian, um, and maybe even a medium, I would say this isn't just Christian, you know, propaganda. There's a book by a, a famous guy. He 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 was a medium. Um, he's called Fisher. He wrote a book called The Siren Call of Hungry Ghosts. And um, a friend of mine, Vince McCann, is is a Christian. He wrote a very good review of the book on his website, spotlightministries.org.uk. Now, he went on to say that, that Fisher, he was a medium. He was not a Christian. Um, he ended up committing suicide after writing that book because he he did not get free of all, of all these spirits that he had channeled. Um, he was attacked by them. He, be, he actually came to the realization they were not the dead relatives that he thought they were. They were not the spirit guides that he thought they were. They were something quite evil. But because he never came to Jesus and he never got deliverance ministry, that poor guy, like my own dear mother, committed suicide. Um, so, you know, it really is tragic when this happens to people. But, but yeah, you know, I would like to talk about purity um, briefly because I'm sure some folks will think, well, that's all very tragic and everything, but what does that have to do with me? Uh, you know, I'm not involved in any of that. Well, no, I, and also I would like to say we're not pointing the finger at people who are. 
Um, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and rulers of this dark world. Ephesians 6. It's not the people that we're angry at. It's the, the spirits, it's the demons that are doing this we're angry at. But no, maybe you're not tempted to have sex with entities, but sexual purity is important for all of us. You know, maybe there are believers listening who are tempted by um, other sexual actions or, or sexual thoughts that, that they know um, is not godly. And especially in the last days, this is going to happen more and more. I know of people myself who have contacted me that have said they've had uh, adulterous thoughts or actions. Um, so this really does um, apply to, to any of us. None of us can think that we're holier than now and, you know, point the finger at others. Um, and Jesus has got some strong words to say about this. And, and, you know, Christians who fall into sexual sin wonder why they're not as effective as a Christian, why their prayers aren't getting answered or why, for example, they don't have power over demons anymore. Well, you know, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. So it's an area that we need to be more and more careful with in these last days because I believe it's only going to get worse. Mm, yeah. Um, it, it, oh, I guess in some way or another, it's probably a struggle that many of us have, you know, to some degree or other, or on some level or other. I, I don't think anyone, as you see, is, to, is totally immune. So we have to be mm -hmm. really careful, you know, how we deal with it and and keeping things right with God, you know. Um, yeah. Now, I believe you've actually been writing a book that covers topics like sex with ghosts and also aliens. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, um, it, it should be out this year. And um, obviously my own story is in it and the story of my mother and how she was raped by these so-called ghosts and aliens. But I have other um, people's testimonies in it too. A woman who was a paranormal investigator, she experienced this. A guy who was uh, in contact with so-called aliens, he shares about about that too and other testimonies um of, of various natures so so really it's a book that no matter what a person's spiritual beliefs are i think this book will be an eye-opener for them and for christians too of course and um, it should be out sometime this year and you know for folks who who want help um i can also give some sources tony that'd be great yeah, and some of your listeners may have heard of them already. There's an excellent video online by Chris White, and he's also written a book, Sleep Paralysis, What It Is and How to Stop It. Excellent resources, and I would recommend that whether the person is experiencing sleep paralysis or attacks from any types of so-called ghosts, so-called aliens, which are, at the end of the day, just demons in disguise. There's also an excellent website by Joseph Jordan and Guy Malone, alienresistance.org. And again, lots of advice there um, and lots of testimonies of people who have been set free. And basically, the, you know, those sources will go into more detail. But, but, but in brief, uh, can I just suggest that how to be set free from this is um, basically number one come to a realization that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is a true savior and ask him into your life. Ask him to forgive you and cleanse you. That is the most important thing. In fact, it's the most important decision you can ever make in your life. Number two, um, you know, tell Jesus that you're sorry for these things, whether it was done to you um, against your will or, or whether you asked for it. Just, you know, repent to him for these activities and number three find a, a reputable deliverance minister who can cut you free from this practice from these demons and set you free from it so that it doesn't happen to you again um, my blog lists um, some deliverance ministries but again I, I think you'll find that if you just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to a reputable one um, you will find one and be set free from these things. 
That's awesome. Okay, so uh, if you could let the listeners know what your blog is called and also pray for our listeners, that would be really awesome uh, way to finish up this show, I believe. Thanks, Tony. Yes, my blog is ourspiritualquest.com and I do like to collect lots of testimonies from people around the world who have had really strange supernatural experiences and how they got set free through Jesus Christ. There's also TV interviews of myself, radio interviews with me and others and a lot of my guests as well from my own radio show that people can check out. A lot of them were into New Age, a lot of them were into the occult witchcraft shamanism whatever and um, they all get set free through jesus so the name and of yeah, that again the name of the blog again yeah that is our spiritual com. i realize i've been talking really fast but i've just been trying to get all the information no, in. this is awesome it's been great so yes if you could uh, pray for our listeners that would be a really great way to close this out laura oh that'd be wonderful thanks so much tony yeah, I just want to, 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 to say to folks, if this is, is, is seeming relevant to you and you would like to ask Jesus Christ into your heart, just say a simple prayer like this. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me, that you want me to be free. I thank you that Jesus Christ lived just the life the Bible describes that he died on that cross for my sin and that he rose again. And I now ask, Jesus Christ, will you come into my heart and become my saviour and help me to develop a loving, close, intimate relationship with you? I thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And I would like... Amen. And I would like now um, to pray, those of you that, that want to repent for such involvement, pray something like this. Heavenly Father, I'm sorry I was involved in these things. I repent for each and every one of these practices. I list them all to you and I repent for them in my heart. And I just ask you to, to set me free from this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Uh, well, this was powerful. Great message, Laura. Um, so much in there and so important. I, I just want to say thank you so much for being on the show today, Laura. And I hope folks will check out your blog if they, I'm sure many of them already know it, but if they don't, make sure you go to a spiritualquest.com and check out Laura's work, and we'll look forward to the book coming out as well sometime this year. So thanks, Laura. Well, th- thanks so much for the opportunity, really, just to share people about this this whole phenomenon and really beg people with all my heart to please, please think again about getting involved in these things. Awesome. We'll chat to you again soon. Thank you, Tony. God bless. God bless you too. Folks, don't forget to visit our website regularly, a minute to midnight.com, where we put all our shows and articles. We do run a minute to midnight 100% by donations. We couldn't do it without your help, so we thank those that help us, and we really appreciate it when you do give to keeping our show and our website running. I write, play, and record all the music that you find in our shows. It's available on our website as well uh, free music for download A Minute to Midnight is run by a small team and our website has archives of all our shows in both audio and video format and we do have our shows up on iTunes as well if you want to subscribe to that channel we have a forum, a community forum on the website you're welcome to join that and don't forget to bookmark our site like this video on YouTube if that's where you're watching it And we'll catch you in the next show. Have a great week. Until then, this is Tony signing out.